Well, we have a new generation of Intel CPUs, and unfortunately, the most exciting news I saw today about CPUs isn't that these CPUs came out or their performance, it's that we get some leaked claims about the 9800X3D because that might actually give us an improvement in gaming performance. Uh, so, uh, yeah, anyway, that might be all you need to know, so I guess you could end the video here. Uh, but in general, overall thoughts on this generation of CPUs from Intel, and then maybe we'll talk about the 9800X3D leaks, and do we even need faster gaming CPUs, because I've been talking about that in some of my recent videos, and, and, and all of that. So, first of all, um, at least Intel was honest when they claimed that the uh, new generation of CPUs will not be faster than their previous generation, but could de deliver some better efficiency while reaching similar gaming performance. Also, I'm focused on gaming performance here. Productivity side of things is less disastrous. Uh, it's just from a gamer's perspective, we're not really seeing uh, Im improved performance here. Here's the 1080p average results from Tech Power Up. Uh, they also have 720p and 1440p results you could take a look at. Uh, if we look at hardware lux, you can find some games, uh, like, like individual games, where the 285k does outperform the 14900k slightly, like uh, in, the, in their Starfield test, for example. Starfield's a game that can definitely scale up to using a lot of cores. Uh, which not every game can do, but if you scroll down to other specific game examples like Cyberpunk, uh, we're then seeing the 285K underperforming the 14900K. Uh, so again, basically it can vary game to game, but in general, uh, the new CPUs are slower than the previous CPUs from Intel, and all of them are underperforming uh, CPUs like the 7800X3D from AMD, and even like the 7600X3D um, is outperforming some of these. So uh, yeah, it can look a little bit uh, a little bit rough there. Uh, if you look at somewhere like Hardware Unboxed, for example, uh, we can see in their 14 game average, the 7800X3D is way out in front, uh, definitely beating the 14900K previous generation and then Intel's current generation falling below the 14900K. And that's kind of what we're just seeing uh, overall. If you do look at the tech power up results, they also have benchmark results for the 265K. And they also look at different power limits removed, stock, things like that. Uh, and they even have the 245K in here. So, so I really like the tech power up results as far as looking at the, the whole lineup. But I mean, like the 245K is even slower than something like a 5800X3D, which came out quite a while ago from AMD. Uh, so, you know, how, how excited can, can we get about this stuff? Uh, chips like the 285K, even with power, power limits removed, not faster than 9600X on average. Uh, and then are they offering excellent value? Well, sites like Hardware Unboxed are, are taking a look at the, you know, cost per frame on average per CPU. And while the 7800X3D is crippled by the fact that AMD has been uh, not shipping good supply of this because the 9800X3D is incoming, even at its inflated price of $480, uh, we're not seeing that big of an argument here uh, for the new generation of parts, which um, uh, 285K is actually kind of worse value here than that. Oh, that's a bit rough. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, like I said, and then we'll be seeing the 9800X3D coming in soon, and the 7800X3D used to be available as low as $330 uh, before supply started getting constrained on that. Now, uh, again, one, one thing that often comes up in CPU reviews, though, is do you even need a faster CPU? I talked about that a lot in my video yesterday, so you could look at that one where I look at are all CPU reviews wrong? Because uh, if you think about upgrading your CPU, definitely take into account are you actually CPU, having CPU limited performance in the games that you're actually in right now? And uh, if you are, uh, then, then you could benefit from an upgrade to your CPU. But if you're not in CPU limited performance, uh, you're not gonna see much gains from getting the faster CPU anyway. But is it realistic to end up in CPU limited uh, circumstances? And again, my take on that is it completely depends on the game you're playing, the GPU you have, uh, what graphics settings you're using, are you using upscaling to reduce the burden on your GPU, which makes it more likely to end up CPU limited. There's all sorts of factors in that. But I do wanna highlight a couple of things in like specific games. There are definitely specific games where in specific areas of those games, 
Uh, you are often CPU limited, especially in the 1% lows or 0.1% lows. But along with CPU limitation, sometimes there's also a, I kind of, when I talk about being CPU limited, I'm lumping in RAM with that. And I've seen in a lot of my comments that people wanted, uh, were hoping I would maybe address that a bit more directly and separately, where um, sometimes memory latency and, uh, and system memory can be a bit bigger of a factor. That, that's hard to isolate uh, as, as much as we're seeing here. Um, I, I mean, I, it's harder to explain, I guess, is what I'm saying. But there are certain games like Baldur's Gate 3 where I wanna mention, if you look at the 1% lows and 0.1% lows in the Gamers Nexus review, where this was a strength of the 14th gen chips um, and, and even 13th gen chips, where if you look again at these orange bars, that where even though these 7800X3D chips from AMD were better average frame rate, uh, generally the faster memory platform that we saw from uh, Intel, at least that's my suspicion on what's happening there, it's again hard to isolate that variable, uh, was leading to better 0.1% lows in this particular title. And this is also a title where even on the highest end platform, you might benefit your frame stability by having a, 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 a CPU that performed better in that metric, right? Uh, whereas if you look at Intel's new 285K, uh, we're actually more in line with what we're seeing on the 7800X3D on the 0.1% lows, but with a lower overall frame rate, meaning this is, uh, further showing a regression in one of the areas where Intel previously did have some advantages against the AMD counterparts, uh, when I think it got into more of those uh, benefit from the higher memory speeds and, and things like that. And again, if you're trying to play, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 in, in Baldur's Gate City, uh, where you're maybe, maybe you're fine with a 60 FPS lock, but you want it to be a stable 60 FPS, you can see here that um, you know, so even the big big CPUs kind of struggle there. And yes, is that a fault of game optimization? There was probably better coding that could have happened or better planning from the design phase of the game that could have executed better performance here. But that doesn't change the fact that somebody wanting to build a high-end system uh, might have wished we got faster CPUs that could, uh, you know, power through some of that worse code. But here we're actually, again, seeing a regression on that front. And in general, uh, if you look at uh, certain reviews, that look at memory latency, there is a regression in memory latency uh, specifically here uh, versus the previous generation of Intel parts. And that is likely a heavy con heavily contributing factor to the underwhelming gaming performance because games can be quite sensitive to that. Another game that again, I do want to emphasize is heavily uh, uh, poorly optimized in the city areas uh, is, is something like Dragon's Dogma 2, where again, uh, Gamers Nexus takes a look at this um, in one of those city areas. And once again, this is a place where we would like to see uh, you know, our overall performance improved, but we're just not getting that here. So again, would it be nice to get a faster gaming CPU for high-end systems? Yes, but also another reason why, uh, again, I, I'm kind of disappointed here, because I'm not sure everybody's getting my argument uh, about, about why uh, other reasons why we want CPUs to be getting faster, is if CPUs get faster, it forces, at the same price, it forces down the price of chips that used to be the fastest ones. You see that, right? So if we're not starting to get chips uh, coming in here, uh, knocking our previous leaders off the podium and pushing their prices down and generally just that frames per dollar down, then that's an overall net bad thing if you're trying to buy into higher performance at a lower price. So even if you're not going for these high-end chips, um, they can kind of force the overall uh, performance metric uh, to be better you know, frames per dollar if they force uh, previous generation products to go down in price. But as we can see here, there's nothing in this generation forcing that to happen, which is disappointing. Uh, so in the end, it just kind of leaves us with, it looks like we're getting the 9800X3D in a couple of weeks, and hopefully it's actually better, uh, better performance. <laughs> um, now, AMD has recently shown that their first party benchmarks are uh, not trustworthy on at least some cases, which means that official claims from AMD, uh, well, really from any first party benchmark, but again, AMD has specifically recently uh, had very bad CPU benchmark uh, claims compared to what we actually saw in third party reviews. Anyway, hopefully they have learned their lesson and these claims are now realistic. But anyway, 
Uh, this is from videocards.com, where they are claiming that they have gotten access from their sources, they're not naming their source, obviously, to not get them in trouble, uh, to AMD's official performance claims for the 9800X3D, which is likely coming out here to kind of steal Intel's thunder, and just to kind of warn people, hey, uh, I know Intel just came out with some new CPUs, but in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll be getting some new uh, uh, X3D parts from AMD here. It's looking like the 9800X3D, they are claiming from AMD to have about a 16% IPC increase and high power efficiency with eight cores and 16 threads. They're claiming that the next generation 3D vCache technology has better thermal performance than the previous generation, which allows for higher clock speeds, in this case up to 5.2 gigahertz. And what that means is not only should it end up with better uh, uh, generational performance in games, they're claiming around an 8% uplift in games, and they're not saying up to 8%, meaning that's the best case scenario. So hopefully, again, AMD first party benchmarks, like I said, recently we had to call those into question. So take this with a massive grain of salt, even if it is an official uh, leaked slide and claim. They're claiming about an 8% uh, gaming performance uplift over the 7800X3D, but an even better improvement to multi-threaded performance uh, for like creator, creative workloads when you're not gaming, they're claiming up to 15% improvements there for the, uh, versus the 7800X3D. And that would likely be due to having an easier time maintaining uh, multi-core high, uh, multi high clock speeds if it's true that they're getting better thermal performance out of this new generation of 3D vCache. Because that was always kind of the catch uh, for the 3D vCache parts, is that they get a lot of gaming performance out of those um, uh, the additional cache, but because it had uh, it was uh, had thermal issues or it was, was harder to deal with thermally than the non 3D vCache chips, you generally had to clock slower, and so it's looking like they're able to get better clocks out of this generation, which is cool. Um, anyway, so, so those are the overall big uh, performance claims here, and they are saying that it is socketable into any AM5 motherboard, even down to the A620, as long as you update your BIOS. So hopefully this ends up being a, a more exciting uh, CPU launch, but like I said, even if this is an official slide from AMD, uh, massive grain of salt on any official slides from AMD until they show that their you know, behavior has improved when it comes to making uh, claims that line up with third-party benchmark results. Anyway, uh, so yeah, to kind of wrap up the overall thoughts, um, it doesn't seem like the 285K is actually bad or the series is actually bad at all. It's just that uh, until its prices drop to a point where its cost per frame becomes competitive, it's just not that exciting. It's not uh, faster at gaming than the previous generation. It's actually on average slower. Uh, and the 7800X3D is still the fastest gaming CPU out there from multiple reviewers. Uh, again, I'm not a CPU reviewer myself, but uh, I do know that people want my thoughts on the overall launches and everything like that. So I will link this sources in the video description where I'm gathering all this data from. Uh, so that's like tech power up. I had hardware lux here. Uh, Gamers Nexus, uh, Hardware Unbox, and I did look at some others, but these are the ones I featured in today's video. Um, so yeah, that's what we've got there. So uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, was there some efficiency improvements? Yes, and that's good to see. Uh, was there some imp more, further improvements in non-gaming workloads? Yes, and that's good to see. But um, from the gamer's perspective, uh, pretty underwhelming launch, and uh, like I said, not pushing the performance forward means that cost per frame kind of stagnates, which is why I think it would be good for everybody if we got more gaming performance, even if you don't feel CPU limited, and even if um, uh, you, you wouldn't directly benefit from upgrading your CPU anyway. But all right, guys, uh, I hope this was uh, a useful and or interesting video. All sources linked in the video description, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.